Jamf has two APIs at the moment. There's the what they're now calling the classic API. Uh, it's quite frankly everything I do with the API goes through that one. Uh, if you do any, it's the one that starts your URL rocketman.jamcloud.com slash JSS resource slash whatever resource you need, computers, policies, everything I need to do uh, is through there. And that API takes, can either, you can either send it, you can send it XML data. It will only accept XML, but you can request as a result back either XML or JSON. They also have this new, Jamf Pro API, UAPI, and it will only take and only send back JSON data. Okay, it's a more modern format. That's great. Uh, the challenges for if you do, if you're doing shell scripting, the built-in Unix tools on your Mac don't really parse JSON data well. You can use stuff like Ed, Ed uh, Sed, and Awk. Uh, and TR and other tools to, to get into a blob if you know the format and get the piece out. You'll see an example of that shortly. Um, but there the, it's funny, if you start digging through um, documentation, every time you try to say, what's the best way to, to, to parse JSON data with Bash? Everyone's like, just install JQ. Well, that's fine. But if I'm trying to run a script and all of this comes up because if, if you're like us, a lot of what you're doing is you're writing a script to be deployed through Jamf to run on the computer to interact with the API. That means every single computer in your scope needs to have all of its tools, all of those tools at its, at its availability. And that becomes a challenge if you either have to deploy JQ to everything, or you can switch over to Python neat fun thing about that is that uh, Python on the Mac has been running, still running 2.7 for a while. Yes, it has requests, which is the, uh, the Python library for interacting with an API built in. But yeah, um, you need really want Python 3 to be stable and secure because 2 has been deprecated forever. Uh, and now Apple has said, fine, we're not putting Python on machines by default. Um, so now I would need to deploy all of, all of Python 3 to my machines in order to do JSON parsing. So the, I've got some challenges ahead of me with um, as I start to embrace the, the new API. And in case it was, yeah, exactly, 12.3 is completely removing the Python library. Thank you. Yeah. So um, that's one set of challenges. The, the, the other challenge that's coming up is, as Chris mentioned, uh, Jamf put in 1035 that now the uh, the API, the, the classic API, will accept tokens, a t will be uh, accept a token for authentication, authentication, authorization, a token for authorization, uh, not just username and password or basic authorization. Now, what I mean by that, um, there are a number of different ways to interact and, and Mark has got Ex uh, oh, that's not the one I thought. Okay, that's preloading. I see a second th thread going on. I'm easily distracted. The when you're interacting with an API, there's there's a number of different ways you can either authenticate or authorize who you are and what your capabilities are. Uh, number one is basic authentication authorization, and that is simply a username and password. And I'm going to share a part of my screen. So this is an example of what you might have already done in a API call already. And uh, I'm gonna have to make sure before I hit run to make sure this is enabled because I keep turning it on and off. Um, but you're making a request and if I'm pulling information, I'm using get, I give it my URL and like I said, JSS resource policies. And I've got two different ways I can do this. Let's go with the more simplistic route first. Well, isn't that ducky? Nothing quite like typing while everyone's watching you, right? 
So this is just doing a very basic authentication. I give it my username and password. Um, I can also do a, uh, I, can, I can do this authorization basic. Instead of using my username and password, I can tokenize it. Um, let's just, instead of trying to copy and paste everything, let's just go back here. And what this is, is if you take username, take this, the username colon password, and you pass it to a function called base64 encoding, it will spit this back. And I can now pass this in as a header and get my same result, which means obviously my user ID work. This is basic authorization. It's been around forever. It's not the best thing in the world. And especially for those of us, when you're running a script on your Macs as part of a policy, you either have to hard code that username and password into your script, or you pass it in as a policy parameter, in which case, if somebody does a process lookup at the, at the time that script is running, they will see the parameters passed in of the username and password. Now, you can do a little bit of obscurity, security through obscurity, and use this type of approach, which is a lot of what my scripts use at this time. And uh, if you've seen Jamf's documentation on what they call um, uh, encrypted strings, that is meant for making it such that the you have you have pieces of that string. You have the hash. You have um, sorry the salt, the encrypted string, and the token. And no, you have to have all three in order to be able to decrypt and get the authorization. Two of them go into the policy. One of them is embedded in the script. And it all that does is it doesn't separate out anybody who is still watching on the computer at the time it runs would be able to have all three pieces. What that prevents is if you have a junior admin, you don't want to give the keys to the kingdom, you can separate out that authentication so they can't see um, they can't see everything in one place. If they're looking at the policy, they only see two of the pieces if they're looking at the script. So you can limit that. It, but the way they wrote it, I know a number of, of people have looked at that and thought, oh, that encrypts and encodes my my information. No, it's still, all that information is still visible within the computer. Okay, so what are some other ways that I can interact with an API? Um, if you, uh, a lot of the work that I do is uh, interacting two different systems together. I'll use something like Zapier, uh, what is now called Make, used to be Integromat as of last week, they changed their name or the week before. Um, if things like that, that, that connect one API to another, or even simply running a Zoom uh, marketplace app, those tend to use API keys. Now, an API key um, is a type of authentication, authorization, excuse me, where the credentials are handled. It's, it's one token that remains static, but it's not handling user authentication. It's giving permission to the entire application. What Jamf is implementing is user tokens. And a user token means that I first have to request, show my identity, request, uh, request a token by showing, here's who I am. And I like to do this metaphor when I used to teach the, the uh, Apple training courses. Think about going up to a security gate. You know, you're wanting to go in someplace secure. I first show up at the gate and I show them my ID. They say, okay, I can verify you are who you say you are. They give you a lanyard. That lanyard now says you are authorized to come in. And everywhere else I go throughout the building, they look at that lanyard to make sure I can, I'm allowed to go into this room or into this place. I don't have to show my ID each and every time I have been authenticated previously. And now I have this authorization of where I can go. That is what Jamf is moving toward. And it is also worth stating that while they have enabled it in 1035, and what Chris was pointing out about that uh, right now, I could go into my server and disable basic, meaning I can no longer interact with the API, the classic API, just using username and password. Okay, I'm not ready for that yet. Let me walk you through what this, if, if you are creating an app, if you have any scripts, that interact with the API. Let me show you because this is going to be a fairly significant. 
significant change to your code, it's going to require at least a few lines at the beginning. And I've, I had a really, I won't say good example, but I had a decent example until I realized it was way too much to see on screen. So I've really boiled it down. I am hoping I haven't boiled it down too far. I'm going to be writing all this up. It'll be on our, uh, our GitHub page uh, soon. So let's start with the first step. How do I get a token? To get a token, I don't go to the classic API. And this is the part that really threw me for a loop. I am actually going to the universal API and requesting a token with a post command. I am saying that what I want back is JSON data because it's the, I didn't, technically I didn't have to specify this. It's the only thing it will uh, spit back. And I am giving it my basic authentic authorization i have to keep authorization authentication i have to first do that check in at the gate right now i could have i could have easily done as you see i have my other example like i did on the other page i can still give it instead of the the header i could still give it the if you're the per, if if your scripts use the minus u flag to give it username and password you can still do that um i tend to do it with this base 64 encoded string so that's what I'm doing here. And uh, right now I'm just saying, fine, make a query and spit it out and stop. And this is what I get back. Um, hopefully that's big enough for everybody to see. So this is JSON that starts, uh, that says, all right, here's your token. And it's this big long string here. And it expires in, what is it? 30, oh, 30 minutes by default. So that means this token's only good for 30 minutes. How many of you run scripts in policies that run last longer than 30 minutes? Nobody, nobody, nobody need. If so, something's wrong with your script. Um, so you don't have to worry. I'm not definitely, I'm not covering today, uh, but there is a simple way that within that 30 minute window, you can submit to extend that code. Um, but for today, like I said, 30 minutes is way long enough for, for everything I need to do. Okay, great. I've got this. Now, what do I do with it? Um, well, I can simply take this and put it into a different function. So this is, you'll notice my same request, my same curl command from before. I'm asking for policies, but now instead of having to give it that uh, username and password, I'm passing in this token. Well, of course, I need to actually tell it what the token is. So now if I hit run, I'm getting back that same XML data I got on the first page, um, a list of all of my policies. So for your, uh, and to show then what this will look like together. Oh, I, I do want to take, I'm sorry, I do want to take a step back because I exited out earlier. Um, you'll notice what I did with this one is I did a copy paste of that token. Is that convenient when you're trying to run within a script? No, I need to be able to capture that and utilize it. And as you saw, I, as I mentioned at the beginning, the big challenge with all this is that I'm used to doing everything. And this is what they teach in the 400 classes is you interact with the API, you get back to XML, you use XML lint, XPath, you use various tools already available to every single Mac to navigate through the XML to get the data you want. But for this particular snippet, and again, it's only to get back that token, I need to be able to parse JSON. So there's a couple of different approaches on how you can get that without having to install JQ on all your machines. Because remember, as long as you're interacting with the classic API, you can still it still accepts XML and you can still get back XML. So for interacting with the classic API, there are no changes to your workflow, except that before you can interact with the API, you need to request a token. And starting later this year, they said in the fall or by year end, they will remove basic authentication from the classic API. So we have from now until year end, and when they say fall, does anybody else think that that deadline is going to be right around JNUC? That's just what popped into my head. I hear fall, I think JNUC. 
Um, so for now, I, I'm needing to pull the data out, pull that token out, and then I can just simply change all the rest of my functions, all the rest of my script to instead of doing a curl command uh, with username and password or my base64 encoded string, I can use this token. Uh, now I pulled from uh, Der Flounder, if you're not familiar with that blog, I do have the URL. And again, this will be in our write-up that will be going out later. I just wanted to make sure everything was correct and, and stable before I, uh, before I started publishing things. Um, his, and he has two different bits here, and I love this because this is the way I was gonna have to hack at it. If you're using less than 12, if you're using, um, who wants to do the math on, on, you know, I'm trying to remember which one was 11. 11 is Big Sur, right? I'm looking for a nod from a couple, okay. So if you're running on Monterey, if you're running before Monterey, you can use this combination exactly as I said of, of awk and other tools to just pull that information out. If you are running Monterey, the PL util, the plist utility has been upgraded to allow us to simply extract raw stuff from JSON. So I take that output that I got, you know, you'll notice I stored my curl command um, or the output of my curl into auth token. I can just spit it back into PL util. And that means that not only can I get, in fact, I should just do this. Oh, because I still have my exit in here. So now I don't even have the quotes around it and I don't have the rest of that JSON. I just have the string I need. So this can be stored in a variable that I can then pass on to the rest of my script. So for if, if every single computer in your fleet that you're running an a, uh, API script on is running on Monterey, perfect. One very beautiful line. And this would work, this tool is going to be great for as we do transition everything over to uh, the universal API, the, the new API. This will be the tool we'll want because it is a nice, simple way to navigate um, to navigate JSON. This is going to be beautiful. It's built onto the Mac. This is going to be the tool I use in my shell scripts to navigate it. But it does have that requirement. Um, I don't know about you. I don't, uh, for any of our clients, I don't think we have, there's no client we have 100% moved to Monterey. So um, I'm going to be using, this is fine because I know the exact format of that string for me to get based on using quotes double quotes, I know exactly where that token is in that string. But for the rest of JSON that I'm receiving back, that's going to be a lot of manipulation. But again, that's the problem for a later month. All right, so I've got my token either by beating it out of here or by simply extracting it here. Almost click to stop sharing. Now with one, I start at the very top of my script and I request my token. I then use one of the different tools that I have at my disposal to grab the token. And then I turn around and I can do every other part of my script. Every other part of my script runs just like it normally would, but instead of saying either, instead of doing authentication basic authorization, I did it again. I've screwed myself up. I know nobody else cares, but I do. Authorization, authorization bacon, basic, uh, I say bearer and I give it that token. And as long as my script runs within 30 minutes, which is every single one of my scripts, one command gives me everything I need. Um, let's see, the other thing I was gonna show just for the fun of it, this is, I completely did not bring up chat while I was talking. Uh, <laughs> All right, I will, I will skim through this when I get done sharing. Um, the big, I just wanted to show off the JQ command because I went ahead and tried it. I am not going to run this because I do not have JQ, for example, installed on this computer. So already it's an example of one computer that I don't have JQ on, but you can see just how clean this is. 
all I have to say is starting at the root level, find token. JQ is an amazing tool. So if I were going to, if I don't have PLUtil at my disposal, but I do have Python or, and I don't have, and I don't want to install Python and everything, JQ is a simple uh, brew command that you can execute, or you could package it up yourself and push it out. One command is just the cleanest thing for parsing all uh, of JSON. 